Uh, this morning is uh, Remembrance Sunday. Today is Remembrance Sunday, uh, as we know. And I decided I would bring a couple of things uh, this morning to show you. Um, the first is, uh, is this. Uh, I guess you can see okay uh, what that is. Um, this is a helmet, which I believe is from the Second World War. Um, some of you may know more about these things than me. I'm sure you will. Um, it's very hard. It's made of metal. It has an A on the front, which um, leads me to believe it may have been something to do with air raid wardens. Um, but it's lost its, um, it's lost its webbing from the inside, so it would be very uncomfortable to wear. Um, it's just metal on your head. Um, I can't even remember where I, I got this helmet from, but I know I've had it since a boy. I've been carrying this around with me since I was a child. And it seemed important to me not to let it go. Um, I don't know if that's because I'm a baby boomer born after the Second World War. Um, and in that era when uh, the war was still having some sort of effect on us. Um, and I was very aware that my generation was growing up in a different world to that which my parents had grown up in. They were both young children um, during the Second World War. And it seemed to me important to keep this. And, and I've kept it ever since. Um, this helmet. It's a symbol, of course, of war. It reminds us uh, of the wars which have been fought by this country in the past um, uh, centuries. Other symbols uh, uh, to remind us of the war, of course, are the poppies. And you may notice um, today that I'm wearing two poppies. I'm wearing the poppy from the Royal British Legion, the one we all recognize, and then this one. This, I don't know if any of you will recognize this. It's a slightly smaller poppy, slightly more intricate. Um, two years ago, Naomi was invited by the British High Commission to go to Australia as part of the um, events there to mark 100 years since the ending of the First World War. And I was lucky enough to be able to go with her um, to Australia. This is an Australian poppy. I don't know how many countries uh, across the world um, wear poppies, but certainly uh, in Australia they do. And it's a slightly different poppy as you can see, but um, they, they do just like we do. Um, they have poppies all over the place at this time of year. Do you know how long, uh, for how many years we've been wearing poppies from the Royal British Legion? Any ideas? You can't answer me, of course. The answer is 99 years. This is the 99th year uh, of the Royal British Legion, founded in 1921. And uh, they sold poppies in that very first year which they bought from America and sold here. And they raised 106,000 pounds in that first year. And poppies have been sold every year since. And even this year they have been on sale, but it's been hard to find a poppy, hasn't it? And so I do just want to put in a plea here, please, for the Royal British Legion and for your support of the Legion. We would have had a collection uh, if we were here in church today, and that collection would have gone in its entirety um, to the Royal British Legion. We're not able to do that this morning. And so I would ask you if, if you can, and if you're able, and if you're minded to, to go online and make a donation um, to the Royal British Legion, uh, because their income will be vastly affected this year by the lockdown, by the coronavirus and by the fact that they've not been able to go door to door selling poppies. The helmet reminds us uh, of war. The poppies remind us of war. 
War is, is an awful thing. We would never want to go to war, would we? We would never want to take up arms against another country. And yet sometimes we have to do that. I'm reminded of that expression, evil abounds when good people do nothing. Evil abounds when good people do nothing. There are times when we have to stand up for what is right and good, even if that means taking up arms. But it has to be a last resort and it has to be uh, measured our response. I brought something else to show you this morning. Uh, it's this cross. Uh, this is one of my treasured possessions. Um, this is a cross that was given to me uh, in Kenya by the Sudanese students who were studying in Kenya. And this cross is made of wood, which is very heavy. You know how, how most wood will float in water. That's how they manage to float um, hundreds of trees down rivers, don't they, to, to the paper mills and things like that. Most wood floats in water. This wood immediately sinks to the bottom. Um, again, I'd like to ask you, do you know what wood it is? But you can't answer me. It's black, it's heavy, it's ebony. This cross is made by the Sudanese um, from ebony. And it has, you may be able to see, lots of bits of metal, metal rings um, and metal uh, studs in it. And uh, those pieces of metal, it's said, are taken um, from discarded um, weapons. And um, there's been fighting for many years in Sudan between the north uh, and the south, uh, between the largely Muslim north and the largely Christian south, sadly. And um, the, the young lads that gave me this, uh, if they made it or if their uh, relations made it, were using bits of metal from, from shells um, and, and other discarded um, weapons to, to make this cross. And so this really is an example of um, making plowshares um, out of um, swords, isn't it? Um, it's, it's a living example of that. The, the Dinka tribe who made this are, are a cattle people. And they use their sticks um, to drive off uh, animals and, and to protect their cattle when they're out herding the cattle. Uh, they also believe they ward off evil spirits. Well, they've now turned their sticks into crosses. And uh, if you were at a Dinka service, you may find many of these people with these crosses, holding them aloft, praising God and giving thanks to God. Christianity uh, is uh, alive throughout the world, isn't it? And even amongst the cattle people of South Sudan. Many, many Christian people there. And the cross, of course, is a symbol to us, not of war, but of peace. The cross is a symbol that Christ came to break down barriers between God and man and between man and man. The cross uh, is there to remind us that we are called to be people of reconciliation and peace. In Christ, there is no East or West, we say, no Jew nor Greek, no rich or poor, no male or female, no slave or free, for all are one in Christ Jesus. We are called to be peacemakers in the world. And if, if we went to Southern Sudan today, we would be greeted by the words, hello brother, hello brother, because they recognize that uh, Christians all over the world are brothers and sisters with one another. There is nothing to separate us from God's love or from each other. And so on this day when we remember 
uh, the wars we have fought, the divisions uh, of our world. Let us also uh, remember that we are called as Christians uh, to bring people together, to live in peace with one another, to find ways of reconciliation and unity. Do you know what happened 21 years ago tomorrow? On the 9th of November. It was the coming down of the Berlin Wall. The Berlin Wall was a symbol of disunity, wasn't it? Uh, of different ideologies. Um, of people unable to live with one another together. But 21 years ago, the people rose up and they shook that wall until it fell. And that's what we're called to do as Christians, to break down the barriers which divide us and to live in peace and unity with each other. And so when we come to pray in a minute, we'll be praying uh, for uh, unity in our world. And particularly, let's remember America uh, and uh, all that's gone on there in the last uh, few weeks and uh, pray for uh, President-elect Biden, that he's able to draw that country together. And we pray for peace throughout our world on this Remembrance Sunday. First, we're going to hear our next hymn, which is, O Worship the King. 